So far away, Lucas. First wiki weekends back in the office. What are we talking about? We're going to be talking about... Oh, God! Oh, God! I just turned my phone on, like... We, I guess we can reveal this now if you're watching. Um, I use my old phone and it connects to the internet to read the wiki entries from. And it's not been turned on since I've been back to the office. <laughs> so I'm now getting three months worth of Facebook messages. <laughs> and it's just... Oh, God. Oh, Lucas, it's not stopping. It's not stopping. So I just got like three months worth of um, Facebook Messenger updates in like one second. <laughs> and my phone is just having a fucking bad time. <laughs> As you often do, Lucas, would you like to let the lovely on his own know the topic of today's Wiki Weekend is specifically? Yeah, so we are going to be talking about Yugi Moto from the Yu Gi Oh! series. Yes, and we're referring specifically to the Yu Gi Wiki, a link to which you can find below. And we'll start, as we often do, at the beginning. Oh man, I'm just seeing a picture of Yu Gi, and it's like, you know, like little Yu Gi. Yeah. When he's like, oh, I love playing card games, and then below that, it's just like the fucking Pharaoh. Just, Ugh, what you fucking got? <laughs> so, names Yu Gi Moto. Nicknames Yu Gi Boy from Pegasus. Little Yu Gi by Kaiba. Yug by Joey in the dub, and then King of Games. What a fucking title. The King of Games. But what he also man. doesn't know what Pot of Greed does card. He doesn't know what Pot of Greed. He also doesn't know what a trap card is, and then there's a competition that he wins. So here we go. Birth, June 4th. No date, so we don't know how old Yugi is. Height, five foot exactly. Oh, he's a five foot king. Yeah. We stand our five foot tall kings. Weight, 42 kilos or 92 pounds. Gender, male. Favorite food, hamburger. Um, least favorite food, a shallot mushroom. And then relatives, um, Yugi's mother. Um, Solomon Muto, his paternal grandfather, and Pharaoh Aten in a past life. Oh, man. Like, the thing is, though, Yugi is just cheating because he's always back by like, dueling people two on one. He is! Super unfair. And he's got, like, an entire extra lifetime of, like, dueling experience. His deck in the anime is strategy, um, toy, slash inner strength, without Yami Yugi. So without, like, um, uh, his Pharaoh alter ego, he's got to have inner strength. And his deck master is Karibo, the Dark Magician, and Kaiser the Seahorse. So we have here, his other decks include the Magic Darkness deck, the Magnet Power deck, the Magic Time deck, the Magic Darkness deck, and the Give You Courage deck. And his appearances are in the anime, very first episode, for his debut. And the animes he's appeared include Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh the Movie, Pyramid of Light, Yu-Gi-Oh GX, Yu-Gi-Oh Capsule Monsters, Yu-Gi-Oh 3D Bonds of Time. And Lucas, thoughts on either Yu-Gi the character or Yu-Gi-Oh the game? I don't mind Yu-Gi the character. I think, like, he's a bit... Bland, but that's kind of, you know, the protagonist inside of him. But I do love his hair. Yeah, his hair is amazing. His hair is so fucking extra. It's like that legendary screenshot that goes around of um, Spot, the main character, and it's just Yugi and, <laughs> like, five normal dudes. And am I right in thinking the reason we're talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! today is because you, you had that itch again that you had to scratch? I did. And that itch is that you want to play some fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, so uh, you and I streamed us opening like job lot yeah. of cards each. We're that kind of streamers now. We are, we are. We, we just wanted to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh for a few hours, and yes. we did. And then after that stream, I've gone and bought more Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I can't oh, stop now, Carl. No. Anyway, um, Yu-Gi Moto, also romanized as Yu-Gi Mutuo, or Muto, with like an O in the U at the end. I'm not sure how that, that's differently pronounced, but is the main protagonist of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, along with Yami Yugi. It's once stated that Yugi is the modern-day version of Pharaoh Atem. Along with the spirit of Pharaoh Atem, he holds the title King of Games. Yeah. And that's the thing, so I think in like the original manga, it's not that he's just good at the card game, it's that he's the master of all games. And the idea, I believe, for the anime was that they were going to show him playing a different game every season, but the card game got too popular. That's why they have that one season where he plays Dungeon Dice Monsters that no one likes. Like for four episodes or something, yeah. and he just beats the creator of Dungeon Dice Monsters in the first game he ever plays by using tactics that the guy who made didn't know existed. Yeah, <laughs> He made after, the game and he didn't know after, you could do it. After he beats Pegasus, a man with a robot eye who can see into the fucking future who also invented the game. Oh, so Yugi possessed the 3,000-year-old 5,000 in the dub. Look at that. 
dubs and subs differences already. Mystical Millennium Puzzle, which allowed bo the, his body to bear host to the spirit of the puzzle, Yami Yugi. Yugi was initially unaware of his existence and control of Yugi's body and would involuntarily shift to Yami Yugi at trying times in the English dub, and I fucking love that. Mm. Like, the dub is a winner there because like I just like the idea. It's like, no, the fact that like, I'll take over. The Pharaoh's like, no, I will take over. Two on one, let's fucking go. It's like Ash turning his hat backwards, isn't it? You know he's serious yeah. now. And that's such an anime thing, isn't it? Where the person gets serious and it coincides with like, a physical transformation. That doesn't really make sense. Like, uh, like serious Saitama in One Punch is probably the most like egregious example where he just becomes more chiseled and defined and he's drawn better. <laughs> but even like Ash is is drawn like with like sharper, sterner features when he's in serious Ash mode, and Yugi has like you know he physically grows like a foot taller. I don't know if he does or not because That's no one seems to comment about the fact that he becomes like eight foot tall. D Adonis, yeah. just like I, yeah. And I wanted to talk about that because my head canon that has always been it's not that Yugi physically gets taller, it's that he's more confident, so he seems taller. Yeah, and it's just that he appears taller to us because we're seeing him as being more confident and a more confident person like, will naturally stand more proudly, like shoulders back, like head up, that sort of thing. So it's a visual way of showing us like the increased confidence that he has. And we have here a section on design and all you should just say is bad. I'm just going to put it out there, like the design you should just say bad. Hair, that, good. <laughs> hair, extra as fuck, but that design is fucking awful. Uh, so, Yugi's character design was overseen by Kazuki Takahashi. His normal outfit consists of the standard male Domino Jr. senior high uniform complete with a closed buckle collar. He wears a fucking, like, dog collar to school. Um, his extremely extravagant hair, it actually says that, um, uh, features multiple pointy layers, including a long, blonde, crooked, pointy lock for his fringe. The rest features a set of five large spikes and two smaller spikes coloured black with magenta sheen along the edges so far. He's the only character in the franchise to have his hair divided into three colours. I want to know how he manages to dye that shit. Yeah, so for people who don't know, Lucas has um, extravagantly dyed hair, much in the same way that Yugi does, but he's never commented on, is it, the fact that he has like bright purple, black, and blonde hair. Yeah, it never is, and I'm just there jealous because I'm like, how do you get such a bright colour at the end of black hair, Yugi? Tell me your secrets. Anyway, Lucas, you have several sections here uh, for Yugi Moto after designing a biography which, looking at it, goes on for about 85 million words. We have other versions, relationships, duels, gaming items, and trivia. So pick two of those. I'm going to just go with, like, gaming items and trivia. Okay. Because I presume the gaming items is, like, is Millennium Puzzle and his decks let's, and that. Well, let's find out, shall we? So gaming items, deck, and Yugi Moto's decks has its own wiki entry, because of course it does. Yugi's decks are most famous for his Dark Magician. Yugi's deck probably has the most variety and balance of other characters' decks in the series. And he's sometimes referred to as a strategy deck or a bullshit I win deck, because he always pulls out whatever card he needs. He does, and that's the thing is, it doesn't matter what card you have, if you have just some control over probability and yes. pull whatever card you want. So do you want to explain that, Lucas? Because I think it's it's not so much explained in the English dub that most people watching this will be familiar with. And it's like, oh, believe in the heart of the cards. If you believe, like you'll draw the card that you need next. It's not actually that, is it? The Millennium Puzzle does something much more stupid. What is it, Lucas? As far as I'm aware, so like, you know, I'm not 100% on this, but I believe... Yugi's like millennium power is that he controls what's coming next in his like deck essentially. So when he says, I believe in the heart of the cards, he's using a power to like change probabilities to make it so that he gets the exact card he wants. Yeah, or needs in that scenario. It's basically like Domino's power from Deadpool 2. Yes, yeah. So it's like, you know, she just like, has the ability to manipulate probability in her favor. And it's like, that is fucking broken OP. Especially in a game that revolves around luck as much as it does skill. And it says here that his original deck mostly composed of low level earth and dark monsters, which he supplements with magic cards to form effective combos. The deck also had Exodia in it. I love as well how Exodia continues to be like the most fucking OP shit ever, which is you win. You get Exodia, you fucking win, done. It's like power creep, can't stop Exodia, it's fucking unstoppable. And it says here, um, as the series progresses, Yugi's deck will continue to evolve and have greater focus on the Dark Magician and its related cards, adding Dark Renewal, Sage of Stone, like, you know, other magic cards that supplement, and increase the power of the Legendary Magician. And then we've got here, um, during the dawn of the dual art, Yugi uses a deck separate from Yami Yugi's, which is based around cards of a toy theme like Blockman and Gadgets. Why would he not use the deck of a legendary fucking, like, Emperor Pharaoh that lives inside a magic, like, fucking pyramid? I'd use his deck. 
did he get pissed off with him or like get, did did Dark Magician let him down? I think what happens is is that Yugi doesn't like that he always relies on the Pharaoh. Right. Like, he doesn't like relying on his strategies. Like, oh no, you take over too much. Like, I don't want to rely on just you to win. It's like, why not? <laughs> a win's a win. Uh, when Yugi's debt goes on tour at Duel Academy, the copycat, the copycat duelist Dimitri steals it and copies his voice and dueling style. While Dimitri copies Yugi's moves very well, he loses because he lacks the bond with the cats. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and, that le- oh. and that led me to the only meme I've ever made, and it is a moment in like the very early anime where Yugi is like reaching out for his deck, mm. like to draw a card, and like it shows it fading away into the distance. Like, oh no, the deck! It censors my doubt. And I just edited that of like uh, when it's round two with your girlfriend, and you're not sure if you can do it. It's like, oh no, the dick! It censors my doubt. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the idea of the deck's like, no, I know you don't believe. Even though you win every built duel, how can he not believe? Yeah, how could you not believe in that deck of cards when he beats everybody, including like uh, just like Kyber? And, oh, man. Oh. Can we just talk about though Kyber's best moment in anything is in like one of the movies where he crushes a can and throws it, and then turns to a subordinate and just says, "Find whoever designed that can and fire them," because Kyber stuff shouldn't break that easily. Fire whoever designed that bottle. Kyber Corp's products shouldn't bend that easily. Yes, understood. That's fucking Kyber right there. Anyway, and it says here that uh, monsters that Yugi is known for or um, linked to in some way include the Celtic Guardian, um, Hinotama Soul, Karibo, Dark Magician, the Magician of Black Chaos, the Black Luster Soldier, and the Blue Eyes White Dragon temporarily, presumably while like you now working with Kyber. It's like Kyber and Yugi, it's like the Goku and Vegeta, isn't it? Like, where it is, like, if you work together, you'd be fucking unstoppable. Like, if it wasn't for one of yours' naivety and the other one's pride, you would be... Comp- like, no one would beat you, ever. You'd win everything. And then, Lucas, that's the end of, um, you know, just stuff about um, Yugi. Because I thought he would talk about his uh, Millennium Puzzle. That must be a separate thing. We do have here, though, trivia. So we'll end on trivia, as we often do. And we have here, Kazuki Takahashi was a fan of Tim Burton's 1990 movie, Edward Scissorhands, and decided that his main characters, Yugi and Yami Yugi, respectively, should also have... (sighs) This is a sound um, uh, clip that's going to haunt me for the rest of my career on YouTube. A leather bondage theme beneath his usual school uniform. Oh, no. So Yugi is canonically, according to the creator of this series, into leather bondage, at least casually. Oh, that's very uncomfortable considering he's a school child. Yeah, man. Lucas, don't kink shame. Uh, in addition, this clothing theme inspired the design for the Magician of Black Chaos with which Yugi is associated. So we're just saying that Yugi's kink was so fucking rough that he, like, started playing a deck that revolved around it. Despite being the main protagonist of many series, Yugi is not usually included in official promotional art. Instead, it is Yami Yugi, so they are distinct characters. And yeah, because he looks cool, because he has like, you know, the sterner features, he looks ready to doom. Uh, which is why one of my favourite images of all time is the one that I use often with you, Lucas, and it's just that meme image of just Yugi leaning against a wall. And he says, well, 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 would you look at the time? It's just a clock that says, duel, 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 duel. It's always time to duel, Carl. It's always fucking time to duel. Um, when Yugi uses the Millennium Puzzle to summon Yami Yugi by yelling Yu-Gi-Oh in the four kids dub, which is why the dub is superior, because that's fucking awesome. It's the hypest moment ever. Um, it is a reference to Billy Batson transforming into Captain Marvel by yelling Shazam. No. He says it right here, Lucas. Why would the wiki lie? Why would the wiki lie? I get it, but God, that bit four kids. Just stop. Stop no, I fucking kids. love that. Like, I love that Billy Bats is like, Shazam! Oh, I like it for Billy Bats, but the idea that he's in the middle of a duel and just goes, Yu-Gi-Oh! And then seemingly doesn't change at all apart from in his mental state. But Lucas, wouldn't that freak you out for a duel? If you're going to duel a man, the first thing he does is hold up a solid gold pyramid and scream his own name. And then suddenly start speaking with a deeper tone of voice and just getting like, looking at you like he's going to wreck your shit. I'd be scared. 